County Durham is situated in the northeast of England and has a population of over 513,000. Durham City itself sits on the River Weir and is home to 43,000 people. It is well known for its Norman Cathedral and 11th century castle. The Safe Durham Partnership is the Community Safety Partnership for County Durham. It brings together a range of agencies to tackle crime and disorder, antisocial behaviour, substance misuse, environmental crime and to reduce re-offending. Partners from across the community, voluntary sector and statutory agencies have been working together since 1998 to respond to the challenges and opportunities they face. As a result, there have been considerable reductions in crime, antisocial behaviour and prolific offending. This is reflected in the public's confidence in offender and crime services. County Durham's integrated offender management team works with around 180 individuals who commit the highest volume of acquisitive crime. Since the Rapport project commenced, 14 individuals have been involved with restorative justice. Prior to RJ, these individuals committed 132 offences. The value of these offences was around £288,000 between them. Post RJ, only one re-offended. In 2011, the Offender Management Unit of the Partnership took the step to access support from Restorative Solutions to train their staff in restorative approaches. Graham Ling was a police officer in the unit at the time and was one of the first to be trained. Part of his role is to facilitate meetings between offenders and the victims of their crime. I work within the multi-agency Offender Management Unit and within all the organisations who are involved, we try to establish um, opportunities to take restorative approaches with people within the cohort who are case managed, with the opportunity of trying to reduce re-offending. That's what the aim is. And that may be like a conference form, or it may be something as simple as a letter. The referral will come from a police officer or a probation officer. And at the preparation stage, what I'll do is I'll approach a harmer first see if they're willing to engage in the process and, and if they are it's a case of identifying a harmed person who's also willing to engage. Within the preparation stage the risk assessment is vital. Uh, you have to get that right because you don't want any potential conflict throughout the process. One of the conferences Graham facilitated was between David Clark and Jenny Sadgro. Jenny caught David burgling her home in July 2011. On the day of the burglary, um, we were having a quiet day, a day off, and we had been sitting outside on the little porch um, at the top of the spiral staircase, it is, where the front door is. And then we'd come in, and we obviously hadn't shut the door properly because about half an hour later I was walking down the hall and realised the door was open and it was a storm, and I thought, well, the wind's blown it open. We haven't shut it properly. So as I was walking down to close it, um, I walked past the study door and looked in and there was a figure there and he was at my husband's desk drawer where he keeps various documents and money. So I went in and I said, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, the front door was open. And so I said, well, I know the front door is open, but that doesn't mean you should come in and go to my husband's desk. So I walked across and he had a carrier bag and inside was a half bottle of wine and my husband's wallet. So I took the bag from him, got the wallet out, and he said, oh, the bag's mine. I said, well, I think you better go now, or I'll have to call the police. Um, I still wasn't really thinking too much about it. But I think over the, by the next day, I was beginning to feel quite anxious. And about, not generally, but about that part of the house. And, I, and that, that lasted for quite... Oh, a few months, I'm not sure if it's totally gone, that if I see the front door open, I have to go and shut it. Uh, I was first involved with crime at 1996, aged 14. Um, that was for a theft from a news agent where I used to deliver newspapers um, for money for drugs. When I broke into Jenny's house, um, I was under the influence of alcohol. I'd been drinking heavily all day, um, had a few Valium, I was walking around Durham, just looking for ways to make money, to, to get more alcohol and more drugs. I was up in the cathedral area, 
came across a door that was partially open and entered the property um, to go in and see what I, what I could steal, steal basically. Um, when I was in the house, I don't know how long I'd been in there, but there was a lady confronted me and said I shouldn't be in here, what was I doing? Um, and then she noticed I had a husband's wallet in a, in a bag what I had, what, what she grabbed off me. Um, the only thing going through my head at that time was, I want my bottle of wine back, what was in that bag? Um, so I, I managed to retrieve the bag off Jenny and left the, left the building. Well, it was Graham Ling who uh, contacted me and explained about restorative justice and asked me to meet David, uh, which I was pretty, you know, happy to do, really. I just believe in that kind of approach. In the house, he'd seemed older. I mean, he was on drugs and drink, so he didn't look very well. When I saw him in the prison, which is after several months, he seemed much younger, and I thought, oh, he's just a boy, and he's about the same age as my son. Um, and, yeah, so in a way that was quite... Um, well, I suppose it brought out my, a maternal part of me, and it was quite nice that he... He, he looked that he looked different and younger. I felt at the meeting we had a really a, a good exchange. You know, we were both able to say what we felt, and I felt there was a real emotional meeting and contact. Um, I was glad to meet David, and I was able to. It had been a difficult year for us because we'd had two deaths, one expected, one unexpected, and um, I was able to talk about that and. So I felt I'd talked about something important for me in that it had affected me. And David was able to talk about himself and say how he felt. I agreed uh, to meet up with Jenny because all, all through my life of crime, victim only ever was a word to me. I could never put anything to, to that word victim. So when I was in prison and I got the opportunity to do the restorative justice programme, to be honest, I was doing as much for myself as well was for Jenny. And I was hoping to give Jenny closure. I remember the day as if it was yesterday. I was in my cell in HMP Durham. I was really apprehensive, fearful, nervous, and I was actually hoping that it would be cancelled because I didn't know I didn't know how Jenny was going to react. It went really smoothly. She was she was a very kind and generous person, and all all Jenny could say is is what kind of help I was going to get when I was out of prison and how she could help me, which it knocked me for six that because I thought she was. She would be there to have a go at me, even beat us round the head. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going to happen, but she explained a couple of incidents, what had happened in her life in 2011, family matters, um, and then this burglary on top and how it had affected her. She didn't feel safe in her own home. She was constantly locking doors, and it just really hit home with me how much I had actually affected her life with, with my actions. And when I got released from prison, I thought college might, might stop me from using drugs. I'd tried everything else. I went to college, it didn't work, so I decided to go into a residential rehab. Um, I spent nine months in there, and now I'm at college doing counselling. I'm seeing my daughter, I've got my own council house. I'm doing an ambassador's course to go and work in the treatment centres for NECA, so everything's going really well since. A big part of it was the restorative justice, what got me into recovery as well, so it's so a big thank you there for that. So have you got furniture? During a six-month period in 2011, David's crime spree cost over £68,000 plus an additional £29,000 to keep him in prison. Since going through the restorative justice process and being released from prison, David has not re-offended despite going through some difficult times and has started to build his life away from crime, supporting other offenders as an ambassador for the Recovery Academy Durham. <laughs> In many cases, restorative approaches have been shown to deliver strong and lasting benefits for victims who choose to engage in the process. It gives victims an opportunity to have their say, to explain to the person who harmed them and perhaps their family and friends what the real impact has been. And it holds offenders accountable, letting them understand the real impact of their actions, take responsibility and help repair the harm they've done. Restorative conference and works because the victim and the offender both genuinely want to say something to each other. The victim obviously wants a series of answers to questions that they've got that will give them closure. And the offender genuinely wants to say sorry to them. 
For more information about the Safe Durham Partnership, please visit the Safe Durham page at durham.gov.uk.